The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Tony! Guys, happy weekend. Tony! <laughs> Good to see you both in person. <laughs> we, need, we need you here, man. Next time. I know. You know, like I was actually, because I was thinking about the guest and who the guest was going to be, and then I didn't see anybody before you announced it. Like I just saw body in Alaska and then I it was just a I silly last post. minute like last minute thing Doug thought of. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> it was funny. And then I saw talks like slowly creeping in. <laughs> that was good. Actually, you guys talking about New York. Um, I've been thinking about the first time I went to New York. I've been there twice. Uh the first time was in 2015. And um it was wild. I, I loved it. I mean, I loved it every single time I went. I went to Manhattan usually and um i love the um, craziness the business everybody's going in certain directions everybody's doing something there's all kinds of stores uh, you can find the amish store you can find this kind of store you can do this you can do that uh, i haven't been in a long time i haven't been since like in six years or five years now but i always had a good time well if we if we start these regular you know quarterly monero uh, meetups, the mini mini Monerotopias in New York City. Maybe it can grow into a full blown conference in New York. I know we've always said like, eh, New York, nobody. But if, if we can get it going here, and we get people using Monero, maybe in one sector of New York, we have that that supermarket in Astoria. Maybe we can make that kind of the hotbed, the Monero town of New York. Yeah. Uh, if we get if we get things going there, then yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll have a Monero conference here in New York for you know, yeah. a couple of years. Got a couple super chats I'll read real quick. Noob tip 25 cents. Question for body. Does that printing slash burning vary from M2 or M0? Uh, I guess we'll have body answer that yeah, that's, later. That's <laughs> a little late. body question. Damn. Uh, or chat GPT. AK add tip $1. Bring that Brazilian on for a guest now. Um, uh, we can have him come on in the viewers all stage. All right. All right, Tony. Tony. Actually, first off, before I wanted to show you like four pictures from New York. Uh, that I took just to kind of look back a little bit <laughs> and then we're right the news. Yeah. Tony's getting all nostalgic on us over here. Yeah, no, no, I had a good time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, let me share the whole screen. Okay. All right. So let's get this picture. So this was 2015, 10 years ago. Very, very different than what it must be today. It was different in 2019 but after covid i haven't been after covid honestly uh, yeah, i just saw that yesterday that's Times square i saw it yesterday yeah, the same. <laughs> yeah it's so crazy <laughs> and uh that's a pretty good picture yeah central park beautiful really beautiful and so this guy uh, there's all kinds of people on the side make, making art for you and stuff like that and this guy took some discs and some sprays and he did this for me, which was pretty cool. Oh, so, wow. That is really cool. Yeah. That was like the spray paint, right? Yeah, yeah, spray paint. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a good time. I was actually thinking, like, um, where else would I live? If New York and California would have been kind of normal, I would have chosen one of either or. <laughs> but I don't know about today. I think I like it more than Florida, for sure. It's just more stuff to do, more... Yeah, but I don't know. Um, all right, but let's get into the new section now officially. So uh, Monero Topia 2024 in November is going to be in Mexico. And um, if you haven't grabbed your tickets yet, you can using uh, code to Tony24 or uh, Tux is going to have a code soon. So you can use either or and you can get 10% uh, off your, your ticket um i recommend you get the vip because then you can go to the dinner and um it, it's just a you know it's just a great time so i'd be able to yeah. shake tony's hand how about that <laughs> <laughs> i know well yeah so now let's get into the news actually still kind of related to new york but it, it's kind of a little bit funny so uh new york city mayor eric adams he burned four tons of illegal marijuana and then i found this video randomly on x no, I have not heard about this. That's funny. Yeah, so he's... <laughs> what, what What community were they burning that in? And they, I'm surprised <laughs> that everyone just didn't go hang out. I don't know, but yeah. Does it say? I don't know. No, but it was funny because he, he took a bag. 
he sniffed it and just put it back <laughs> in. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, Bro really passed for a second and thought, What a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, yeah, I haven't been following, you know, they've been essentially marijuana was legalized here in in new york you can consume it you're legally if you're over a certain age right um you could grow a certain amount of your own plants in in your house but obviously you can't you can't sell it legally uh unless you are licensed and so there's been this like gray period where everybody just tried to sell it because the licensing wasn't figured out yet they Hmm. hadn't launched uh, so you were every like freaking corn, like every deli was like selling wheat. Like you're just crazy. anywhere in New York, like people s- setting up tables in the street and just like selling joints that they, you know, that they, that they're like pre-rolling. Like it was just like everywhere. And now he was cracking down on all these nights, you know, it's, it's regulatory capture. It's like a couple of guys now that have access to the licensing, like anything else you see. They're going to use that to their advantage. And basically, they're kind of funneling everybody into only being able to buy marijuana through these licensed stores, which I'm sure at the end of the day will effectively be owned by just a small group of people. Um, But yeah, that's what's going on in New York right now. Yeah. With regards to weed. So they've been, been I guess, burning all the weed up from the from the (laughs) non-licensed shops and stuff. So I guess he wasn't around you because four talents, you would smell it for sure. <laughs> I'm, surp- I'm surprised Everyone's I haven't get high seen, from uh... the weed burning. What's that? Everyone's going to get high from the weed burning. I know. So I'm saying, what neighborhood is it in? <laughs> you go throw a little mini Minerotopia over there. Um, <laughs> I'm interested to see if somebody on XMR Bazaar starts uh, starts posting a like a weed, perhaps, a weed delivery business. Maybe that would be legal. You're, you're buying or... Or a joint rolling service, right? So you're not selling, you're not selling weed. You're just rolling it. You're just paying for the service of somebody who's rolling joints. So if you have that ability and you're in the New York area, uh, you should post the listing. Somebody might reach out to you. Allegedly me, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um Okay, but let's get into <laughs> the actual news now. So um, we're going to discuss a little bit about Pavel uh, Durov. Um, he is, I think he's a CEO of uh, Telegram app, and uh, he's a Russian-born billionaire, and um, he went back to France, and then he got um, arrested. And he got arrested because, um, essentially, his platform, which is Telegram, um, is not doing enough to counteract stuff as drug trafficking, organized crime, and whatever else people use it for. Um, and yeah, it's been an interesting uh, situation. So uh, let's see. I have then I had this article. So the you know the United United Arab Emirates actually said that they're closely following the case of Pavel Durov. And um, they're asking friends for consular access. They said, if I can find the quote, um, caring for our citizens, preserving their interests, following up on their affairs, and providing them with all aspects of care are a top priority of the UAE. So we'll see what's going to happen with uh, with um, Pavel. But um, it's, an, it's an interesting case. Also, uh, so French President Emmanuel Macron, (laughs) after the arrest of Durov, said that France is deeply committed to freedom of expression and communication, Um, which I'm not sure how true is that. Then, so we discussed a little bit about um, Brazil and X. So X is now banned in Brazil, and a VPN is a tool for criminals. If you are going to use um, X in Brazil, or if you try to use a VPN to access uh, X, then the fine will be $8,874 a day. And Elon Musk um, retweeted a post about it, and he said that the oppressive regime in Brazil is so afraid of the people learning the truth that they will bankrupt anyone who tries. 
And then we have an article from Time. Uh, Brazil blocks Musk's X after company refuses to comply amid feud with Judge. So uh, Brazil started blocking Elon Musk's social media platform X early Saturday, making it largely inaccessible on both the web and through its mobile app after the company refused to comply with the judge's order. Essentially, X uh, missed a deadline imposed by Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Moraes to name a legal representative in Brazil, triggering the suspension. Uh, so to block X, Brazil's telecommunications regulator, Anatel, told internet service providers to suspend users' access to the social media platform. So as of Saturday at midday in local time, major operators began doing so. Uh, the MRI said Warren Musk on Wednesday night that X could be blocked in Brazil if he failed to comply with the order to name a representative and establish a 24-hour deadline. Um, yeah, he also said that Elon Musk showed that he's disrespect for Brazilian sovereignty and in particular for the judiciary, setting himself up as a true supranational entity and immune to the laws of each country. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, and that's some I, somebody said on Twitter that everybody that is not in Brazil they should use VPN and <laughs> pretend that they're in Brazil. Um, yeah, and also the the odd eight thousand eight hundred figure comes from a set fine of fifty thousand array eyes, and that's what it comes to to dollars because also people are talking about why is it eight thousand eight hundred something. So that's that's quite a, quite a huge huge fine for using using X, but. Um, yeah, it's a sad day for X users around the world, and I hope they, they're going to find a way to um, to use it in Brazil. Then this was cool. So we have our first Monero-based Airbnb rental going on on XMR Bazaar. Um, somebody wrote on XMR Bazaar, hello, my name is Hans. He's a digital nomad, currently located in the Midwest. He wants to spend six months, ish, September, February, summer, preferably warm. I'm looking for an apartment or budget furnish, furnish room to rent. Um, so he's a freelance music producer. He works from home and coffee shops. So if you're willing to to help him out, go next to Mar Bazaar and uh, contact Hans. But that's cool in the direction that, that it's going right now. So I saw somebody because I tweeted that out. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're saying a tweet. If you look in the comments, somebody responded like, "Oh, I got, I got the." just the perfect spot for Hans. I'm going to message him on XMR Bazaar. So we, we may have made it happen. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Militia Joan Hart. I have a perfect spot for Hans. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I was looking the way Hans didn't even, he didn't, I don't think he used on XMR Bazaar. We actually have a form dedicated just for purposes of renting out stuff or requesting somebody to rent you something. Uh, so it's, so it's built for that. Um, I don't know if he used that form, but yeah, guys, in uh, you know, get that's just how we get it going. You know, if you're if you're open to somebody couch surfing, crashing on your couch for Monero, or you know, you're looking, you have a place you can rent out potentially, just put it up on X XMR Bazaar. You know, somebody might not reach out tomorrow, but eventually, as the the network effect builds on XMR Bazaar people will reach out. I saw somebody else also them posting that they had attempted to kind of start an Airbnb for Monero a year or so ago. I had seen it. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's in the comments there, but he, he stopped pursuing it because he wasn't getting responses or whatever. Nobody's really reaching out to him. I mean, that's part of the struggle, right? That's what we got to build a network effect. That's what we're trying to, that's what I'm trying to bring everybody to one place, one platform um where it could just be the trust and reputation platform and yet and then you know people will find each other for these things so rather than trying to like bifurcate it and you have like one app just for airbnb xmr stuff i mean eventually that could make sense right but it's like the internet itself in the early days craigslist was if you think of all the startups that have effectively grew out of craigslist all those things were first being done on Craigslist. Like Airbnb first existed on Craigslist before it became before somebody went on and built an Airbnb. It was already happening organically on Craigslist. And you had a network effect there of internet users that were just trying to do peer-to-peer -peer stuff. That's what we got to do in the Monero. We can't we can't separate ourselves because the the network isn't large enough. Uh, so I think that's why it's important in the early days to I know centralization sounds like a bad thing, but get everybody in one place 
so we can build out this global economy. You'll still, you know, you're going to be protected in terms of your privacy, whatever. The platform doesn't take any transaction fees. It barely takes any any data. It doesn't take any data of yours. I mean, whatever you put on there publicly is what is what gets out there. And all transactions are peer to peer. But the power of it is there could be some dude in in Germany that has a spare room that puts it up for Monero and me in New York can see it. And next thing you know, I'm renting out his room and we found each other. Um, and so I, 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 you know, as always, keep putting out this message. Use it. Just use it, guys. It's also funny how Craigslist looks like a website where you probably didn't want to end up on because it's just HTML and probably no CSS. <laughs> like it just looks like a website from early 2000s, but a lot of people are still using it. Yeah, to this so, day, it still has utility, right? It still kind of fills yeah. a niche where mm -hmm. it's like minimal amount of information. Anybody can kind of come on anonymously post something on there without, you know, so it's we're trying we're trying to mimic that because that's, I think, what you initially need to get enough people onto one platform. It's got to be in every. Usually, like lots of times people look at it, if you try to do everything and all all at once, you're you won't succeed at anything. I don't think that really applies to what we're trying to do here with the marketplaces because the real value is in bringing in all the different buyers and sellers, right? And we have enough of them. They'll figure out what they want to buy and sell, whether it's renting apartments or selling their motorcycle. Um, but I think you want them to have as many uh, use cases as possible within that platform. So you can kind of, you have your best chance at meeting the co coincidence of needs, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on, we have uh, Vitalik moving around um, a lot of Ethereum. So he moved uh, 800 to a multi sig wallet and then he swapped 190 ETH for uh, USDC. And on August 9th, he also transferred 3000 to this multi sig wallet. So people are saying, you see. <laughs> Is he dumping Ethereum or why is he making so many, um, so many transfers? Somebody said bull posting <laughs> while dumping on us. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a girlfriend. <laughs> His girlfriend must be really high maintenance. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure what's going on, <laughs> um, but it's uh, interesting. Um, then we have Bitcoin Lightning Payment now settles to a USD bank account in seconds via Light Spark. And somebody wrote, Can someone tell me how this isn't just fiat with extra steps? So I assume we'll watch a little bit of the video. Tony, is there, is there sound to this? Because I we can't hear sound. Uh, I was gonna play sound, but it's just like some. There's nobody talking over it. It's just like some song. So, um, yeah. So this is uh, the light spark. Um, it's just interesting, but it's just fiat with extra steps, like uh, somebody said. They ma they managed to turn Bitcoin into. A See bodies coming. <laughs> I wonder how much they got paid to shield this or if it was a request from their sponsors. Weren't the same guy shielding BlockFi in 2021? <laughs> yeah. Um, then we actually have, let's see. I thought I had one more somewhere. Hmm. Okay, so uh, Chilla posted on Twitter, Colorado's SB24066 might just be the beginning of financial tracking being weaponized against gun owners. This new law could set the stage for banks to become watchdogs over our personal choices, turning them into tools for monitoring and controlling any group's behavior as we approach a future where digital transactions equal digital surveillance. Using Monero and Cash for now offer a last bastion of financial privacy. 
Um, and this was actually approved by governor on May the 1st and effective of August 7th, 2024. But essentially, the, the act requires certain networks that facilitate payment transactions to make the merchant category code for firearms and ammunition available to merchant acquirers, processor who process transactions for firearms merchants. Um, yeah, so it was the beginning of just tracking your finances and um, which are going to be weaponized against you eventually. And starting with guns, then with food, uh, how much meat you had, um, how much you drove and all this stuff. So quite scary stuff. Um, this one is interesting. Um, so Whitney Webb posted on, on X, given all the hype about the RFK junior team up with Trump and what it means for healthcare, I have some questions. So it just talks about how Trump, Elon Musk, JD Vance, they have major investments in biotechnology, companies deeply invested in mRNA and DNA vaccine technology. So what is RFK Jr. is going to do? Um, is he going to be opposing the use of these technologies as he seeks to tackle the chronic disease epidemic in the U.S. in a future Trump administration? Will he allow the health DARPA, ARPA age to continue to operate? Um, so it's actually interesting. And I was thinking about it as well. Um, what exactly he's going to do in a Trump administration. Is he actually going to do what he's been talking about or to what level? Um, we shall see. I shall keep this for last. Oops. Um, I know I had one. I think it's this one. No, I need to find it. I had one more. Uh, I'll find it in a little bit. Um, so you can now go to jail in Germany for calling this person a dude. A German court has ordered the Haas and Hop podcast to delete an episode where the host referred to a bowling trans identifying male by he, him uh, pronouns. The host now face quite a huge fine, uh, 250,000 euros or even jail time from his gendering Nicholas Laura Holstein. Now, I didn't listen to see if... Um, if they made fun of this person or what they've done, or if they just misgendered this person. Uh, but Germany, as far as I know, has been quite going down. Um, and just, just the West of Europe in general. Um, yeah, so the UK with all their rules and Germany, it's, it's quite bad. And then, so talk about this and then I had one more article which is interesting that I need to go back and find uh, but this one is um, it's a final report if you're interested for in knowing the implications of the 10 block lock in the Monero protocol um, Cypher Stacks has written a report for the current protocol and also for FCMP so you can go on a github and then download the final PDF and um, look look into it now, I want to find, I have one more. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one second. We're trying to get Serang to come to Monerotopia as well. Nice. He's been Has he been last year? Yeah. Sunita, was he there? He was there in Miami. Was he? He was in Miami last year? year? Or was he remote last year? Oh, he was remote last year. I'm trying to get him to come in person this year. Nice. Oh, okay. So I found the last thing. Um, what, and what was his pay? I honestly kind of missed this. So was that on the 10, the 20 minute block time? What was that? Paper? Yeah. So there's a report uh, just analyzing the, the 10 block lock. Um, I haven't read through it yet. I only saw it just this morning. Oh, that's, as I always says, I think that's, you know, Monero's kind of biggest flaw is it's, is it's lock time, which you haven't really. that and synchronization. Those two things yeah. are the biggest um, drawbacks. So right curious, now. curious to see what he said there. Um, all right, yeah, let's move, move it along because we've got Brazilian Rhapsody that wants to jump up and give us the... Do right, you have one more news article, Tony? ...local take on what's going on down there. Yeah, so just one more thing and then we'll go to the next part. Um, uh, it was from Chile on X, so ban the scan. The number of CCTV cameras will only increase. 
Uh, this is a post from WikiLeaks on August 30th. And um, somebody said, we're all being treated like suspects in a digital police lineup with our photos taken for repeated identity checks, often without us even realizing it. And just some statistics that on China, one CCTV camera for every two citizens, USA, one camera for 6.6, .6, UK, one for 13.4, Germany, one for 16, Japan, one for uh, every 25 citizens. I guess eventually it's going to be one for each citizen, which is quite a lot of, um, of cameras. But yeah, it's, it's a long video, but this is essentially what, what, what it's about. Just them installing more camera tr cameras, tracking the citizens using AI and identifying them. And actually, I think I mentioned this one time, but um, they've, they've done an experiment in China. They, they told someone to just try to get lost and they found them in five minutes <laughs> so of the cameras. So um, it's probably only going to get worse. But, um, okay, guys. So this was the new section. Thank you for joining us. And again, if you haven't gotten your tickets, uh, code Tony24 or Tux coming soon. Uh, use either or. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there.